today on Smart Section 101. So the goal of this presentation is mainly going to be for introducing users to um, Smart Section, either new users to the, to the software or people just haven't gotten um, really in-depth into Smart Section or have used it all that much. Um, so we're just going to be kind of showing off some of the features here. Um, so this is our agenda here. We're going to talk about what is Smart Section. Uh, we're going to be creating a Smart Section interpretation. Uh, we're going to look at modeling some surfaces. Uh, then we're going to be looking at creating some cross sections in the area. Um, and then we're going to look at the frame builder engine that runs behind the scenes with smart section. We're going to be looking at some fault offsetting, unconformity trimming, and structure conformance. Uh, and then we're going to look at implementing seismic data into the interpretation and some new features that came out in the 2015 release to smart section uh, that I think a lot of people are going to like. Uh, to start off with, Smart Section is a powerful 3D geologic modeling tool um, used primarily for building cross sections um, to correlate logs, uh, create some geologic models, um, and uh, update all that on the fly into the project. Um, it's a three-in-one tool. Uh, Smart Section has its own cross section tool, uh, Frame Builder for building your maps, and Smart Strat for doing any geo steering. Um, in, in your uh, project. Uh, we're not really going to get into SmartStrat in this presentation, um, but it is another feature that you have available to you there. Um, with Frame Builder, uh, users are able to identify any um, kind of more complex structures um, in their interpretation. These are your on-lap, off-lap surface, surfaces, uh, fault intersections, fault gapping, unconformity trimming, and unconformity gapping, um, and you can build your surfaces in real time. Um, SmartStrat, like I said, is the geosteering tool uh, where users are able to geosteer their wells in the interpretation and have full control over the data for refinement and updating your geologic model. Um, so I'm going to go through a few quick slides here, just um, introducing Smart Section, uh, and we'll get into the demonstration portion. Um, when you're first using Smart Section, um, you'll want to create an interpretation. So if you've ever used Size Vision before, Size Vision is much the same way. You load data and you apply it to a interpretation and you work inside that interpretation. So different areas are, will have different interpretations with different sets of data. Um, users will determine um, the surfaces and the wells that they want to load into their interpretation. So you can either load you know, a handful of wells or all the wells or just a handful of surfaces. Um, and then you can um, add wells from a geoatlas layer into your interpretation as well. Um, modeling your surfaces, again, this is um, done using the Frame Builder uh, engine, and it's based either on well-based picks from the database, isomap surfaces built in GeoAtlas, or using seismic horizon data um, from SizeVision. Uh, modeling is real simple. Um, you'll see the surfaces over on your left-hand side. Click a checkbox, and it will show up. And the, uh, these are updated on the fly as picks are made in the cross-section uh, tool and smart section. Uh, cross sections are going to be picked in map view, much like you've uh, done before in uh, Geo Atlas and X section. Um, these are picked uh, as either well to well cross sections, kind of connecting the dots, or projected uh, cross sections, which are going to be your line of section and then projecting wells to that cross section. Uh, with your cross section tool, you're going to correlate your logs, both raster and vector, uh, and make well picks as well as model surfaces using, using inner well picking. Um, as your picks are uh, made and edited in the cross-section, again, your map will automatically update to show you what the structure will look like with that pick um, added there. Um, and you can view conformance, fault offsetting, and unconformity trimming in the cross-section module without the use of Frame Builder. Um, Frame Builder is the, uh, the 3D engine that works behind the scenes in, in Smart Section. Uh, this is used to model your surfaces um, in the map view. Um, so when you're working in Smart Section, if you don't have Frame Builder, uh, surfaces will not be modeled um, for you to look at there. Um, but here you can view your channel surfaces, unconformities, um, fault blocks, and their offsets, and any conformed surfaces. Um, and again, these are toggled on and off um, just with the uh, click of a button uh, up there along this um, toolbar, toolbar that we have. Uh, these are your Frame Builder tools, and so we'll look at them. Um, and again, implemented both in map view and in cross-section view. Um, adding some seismic data to the, the project. Um, 
this allows you to use size vision as a data source um, for your, your services. This is a new feature in 2015. Um, you're also able to add seismic backdrops um, of your seismic data to a cross-section to help you correlate tops um, or geosteer in an area. Um, and you can do this all with a velocity model uh, by tying your horizons to formation tops um, and then updating them both in smart section and in size vision um, and work hand in hand that way. Um, and then some of the new features in 2015, um, first one being the quick pick tool. Uh, this one's pretty cool. Um, as you go through and make picks inside of a cross section, it's as soon as you make a, um, you know, you click and add all your points, save them all at once instead of having to wait for um, it to save and update each individual time. Um, it just makes it a lot quicker to pick and update your services. Uh, size vision as a data source uh, is a new feature in 2015. Uh, as you see, you, you build uh, your uh, seismic interpretation, find your horizon and your seismic survey, and then use that to model a surface. And in um, map view, you're now able to launch the 3D Pro um, tool from smart section, whereas before it used to be in just in Geo Atlas. Um, so with that, we'll move on into the um, demonstration portion here. Um, I'm going to be working in two projects here. Um, first project I'm going to be looking at doesn't have any seismic data, so I'll need to switch over to one that does, so we can look at that here. Um, so we're going to go ahead and launch smart section. The, the first time you launch smart section, um, in, uh, in geographics here, you're going to get a kind of a getting started dialog box here. Um, it's going to ask you to you know, create an interpretation. I already have a few interpretations created, so it's going to ask me to open one first. Um, and when you create your interpretation, it's going to go out and look for a well spots layer and try and apply that to your interpretation uh, the first time you create one. Um, some users may not have a layer specifically called well spots. Um, typically, that gets created when you import data for the f first time. Um, some users will come by and rename it or delete it or um, just not use it. Um, so if they can't find it, that's fine. We can apply other layers to the interpretation. Um, so this is your getting started dialog box. Um, there's two things that you need to add to your interpretation whenever you get it started. Uh, the first one is going to be what wells are you going to be working with? Um, so you have two options here. I can either load all the wells in my, inter in my interpretation. This is going to be all the wells in the project or within your AOI, if you're working in an AOI. Um, or you can load wells on demand, and these are going to be filtered sets of uh, wells. You see I have my filters um, created over here from Query Builder um, that are looking for specific types of data. Uh, we're just going to build one that has all wells in the interpretation. I'm go ahead and click OK there. And the second thing we'll need to do is choose which surfaces are we going to include in our interpretation. And so when you're working in interpretation, the surfaces that you have available to you are all going to be user-defined. You know, these are the ones that you want to be viewing at any given time. Um, it's best to work with only a handful of surfaces at a time. Um, you don't want to have you know, you know, hundreds and hundreds of formations listed there um, and toggle on and off as you need them. Um, that can sometimes bog down your interpretation. So really you're just looking for a handful that you're interested in. Um, and you can always come back and toggle these on and off at any time whenever you're working in the, in the interpretation. Um, each interpretation will have its own set of formations. Um, you'll have multiple interpretations with multiple different um, formation sets there. So this is all just determining this interpretation, which formations do I have available to me when I first open it. Um, so I'm going to grab a few here. Okay, and go ahead and click OK there. And so now when I'm building my interpretation here, um, you can see here, get this full screen. Um, these are all the wells that I've loaded into my interpretation. Um, you'll notice I have a checkbox over here for my wells so I can see which wells are loaded and which ones are not. And I can compare that with GeoAtlas layers um, that I've created there for, for well data. So I can select layers that I've created in GeoAtlas there, contour maps, land grids, uh, culture data, satellite images, um, anything that I might, um, might need there. 
and so I can apply all that there in, in uh, Smart Section. And these are going to be um, kind of uh, viewing only. You can't edit these layers in, in Smart Section. Um, they're just there to kind of give you a representation of the area you're working in and what kind of data you have available. Um, and these could be toggled off at any time, like in GeoAtlas, um, or removed completely. Um, so now we're going to look here at um, that view and what we can do here with the use of Frame Builder. So you remember I added those formations to my interpretation here. And hang on, I'm going to go open up the other interpretation first. This one has all that I need. Um, when I open up um, my interpretation here, you'll see on my left-hand side the panel that controls what surfaces and what um, other type of data you have in your interpretation. So you see my GeoAtlas layers available up here, um, my Wells layer, any cross-sections that I've created inside the interpretation, um, and then any uh, surfaces and faults that I've added um, to the area. Um, and so as mentioned before, toggling surfaces is simple as just clicking a button. So once I click it, there's my surface, and I can view that on the map and you can kind of see you know, where my data is and what kind of control I get. Um, areas where I have good well control, a lot of the surfaces I have here have pretty good well control. Um, I'll get a full extent of the, uh, the layer there. Um, in areas where I don't have well control, say just um, I've picked a surface and just a handful of wells, a uh, surface will be confined just to that area. Um, where uh, you have those um, the picks. Um, that's where conformance comes into play. We'll look at that a bit later on. Um, I can view my cross-section lines in here as well. See where I've picked my cross-sections. And then determine, okay, is there any other area that I need to pick up with cross-sections or anything like that. Um, I'm also able to open up cross-sections from here simply by double-clicking on the cross-section file and it'll launch the cross-section view. And we'll look at that in a minute. Um, so with map view, remember a lot of this, um, all of this is pretty much only capable with, with frame builder. Um, frame builder are going to be your tools up here along the top, fault offsetting, unconformity trimming, uh, conformance tools. Um, all these are applied using the frame builder engine. Uh, so I'm going to toggle on my unconformity trimming and we'll look at what that does to my, uh, my surfaces here. So I have a surface um, picked in here, the MNLS surface, my Minnelusa, is a unconformity, and unconformities are set in the Strat Column Manager. See, so here's my Minnelusa top, and it's picked as an unconformity type here. And so once it's picked as an unconformity type here, I'm able to use it as a unconformity here in Smart Section. So I'll see over here is my Minnelusa um, formation. And I can see all of the surfaces that are being truncated by that unconformity listed here below. So let's look at one of those surfaces here. I'm going to look at my MLBS surface here. And so you'll see some areas where it's broken uh, across the contours. Those are all the areas where I'm being truncated by an unconformity. Um, and so I can see that there in the map view. And I got a um, missing section you know, through here. And we'll look at that in the cross-section view and kind of what that's doing, what the truncation is doing there. Um, and if I want to just see what the surface would look like, you know, without any unconformity um, modeling in there, I can just toggle that off, and I'll get the full view of my uh, MLBS surface across the entire area. Uh, I can do the same with uh, faults. Apply a fault offset here, and I'm going to jump back over to my uh, MNKT top here once I get that loaded. And so with the fault offsetting, you'll be able to see, here's my fault um, kind of polygon in here. I can see my fault uh, sort of surface uh, displayed in there. And I can view those fault cuts for any of those surfaces inside my interpretation. I can do that on multiple faults as well. I have two faults here, fault A and fault B. Um, in some areas, they might be uh, truncating each other or crossing over each other. Um, but again, you can see this is my fault polygon, and this is where the contours are being um, cut. Again, you'll see some cut there. That's part of the fault B. So also on the map, um, one of the features
features that you have in Smart Section that you don't have in, in GeoAtlas is the ability to kind of update that map on the fly. Uh, in GeoAtlas, you'll have to you know, update your layer, regrid, recontour based on new data points coming in. Um, with, uh, with Smart Section, I'm able to come in here and add um, new points to the map at any time uh, to alter my contours the way I need to uh, by using interwell points. And we'll look at interwell points in the cross section as well. Uh, but I can come up here, click and add a point, and then edit its depth uh, to control that area. And then if I had one too many points or I've you know made a mistake, I don't need a point in there, simply just select it and delete it. And my contours go back to normal there. Um, and also in the um, uh, smart section map view here, I'm able to kind of alter my uh, contour view. Um, so you'll see I have a contour interval uh, set up here for these. I can also change that uh, to a different value. So I have every 20 feet I get a contour and every 100 feet a bold contour. I can change that to let's say 50 and 150. And I'll just get a more um, kind of a sparse uh, setup of uh, contours there. I can also change my min and max contour value um, up here at the top. So let's take that back to 20 and 100. Uh, if I need to change the contour line color, I can do so here. Um, this is also controlled by the Strat Column Manager where I can set that. Uh, if I want to view um, points, you know, which, where my well points are for this, um, for this uh, formation, you can see, what, too big? I'll take that back down. Um, I can see these are all my points that have um, that MNKT top. Um, so these are the points that are being used to draw that surface. So you can see pretty good well control. Um, a lot of points in there. Um, and no interwell points um, drawn on here right now. Um, as you guys saw, the interwell points you can add manually to the map or in cross-section view, which we'll look at in a minute here. Um, the last part, um, oh, the color fill um, options I can display here uh, on the map. Again, this is a lot like GeoAtlas. Just display a color fill um, across that area. And uh, I can change my color palette um, and the transparency for that as well. And just kind of view you know, what my uh, contours are doing there, view my high and low uh, parts of the map. Let's tell that off. Um, one last thing I want to point out here um, is at the bottom I have selectable entities. Um, these are going to be the features that I can select on the map at any time. Um, so with my MNKT picked here, I can select contours and any data points um, that I'm displaying uh, on the map there. You see I can't grab any wells or cross-section lines or anything like that. So you know, if you're ever looking at your map and you're trying to figure out, okay, I'm trying to grab this thing, but it's in a tight area and I'm clicking on too many things and I just want to grab one, um, you can toggle that on and off down here with this checkbox. So, um, as I mentioned, uh, cross sections are picked one of two ways, either well to well or projected. Um, again, well to well is just simple as, you know, connecting the dots, grabbing the wells that you want. Oops, I don't have that selectable. I'll grab that. Um, as you can see there, I can't grab the wells to build a cross section because it wasn't selectable. Uh, again, define your know, cross sections by connecting the dots, grabbing a few wells, and then sending them over into a uh, cross section, much the same way you do in GeoAtlas. Double click to end your selection, and it launches your, your cross section there. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and open up this one I already have selected. Again, any cross sections I have created over there, uh, I can double click to open them. Uh, these cross sections are saved the interpretation. Um, so if you create a new interpretation, those cross sections won't be listed there available to you. Um, they're kind of saved there to the interpretation. So let's go ahead and open that. So if you've worked in X section before, um, you'll see some similarities in here. Um, there's your, your wells and your cross section applying prism templates uh, to view um, your curve data or raster data um, in the case of this well over here um, for these wells in the cross section. Uh, some differences though uh, being that in uh, smart section I have the frame builder tools available to me um, to apply any uh, unconformities or fault offsets or conformance options. 
Um, one of the other features of smart section, especially in cross section view, is something called predictive picking. Um, so I have my MLBS surface here um, picked in a handful of wells. Anywhere you see kind of a solid line, that's an actual pick. Anywhere you see a dashed line, that's a predictive pick. So it's just going back and saying, based on surrounding geology, uh, we think that the uh, best place for this pick is going to be right here. And so now I can go through there and use my picking tool, make that an actual pick or adjust that pick, um, move it somewhere else. And I don't think that's entirely correct. Um, yeah, so the, the, the predictive picking allows you to determine in the area where you don't have um, picks across an entire area uh, where it thinks the pick would actually be, um, you know, in the case when you come across and start making those picks yourself. Um, with, um, you know, see some of these surfaces are crossing over each other. Again, that goes back to the um, unconformity trimming that we were looking at before in map view. I can toggle that on here. And when I do, you'll see these surfaces are going to be truncated by the Minnelusa unconformity top. And they no longer show up where the predictive picks are located in there. Now, if I look at this in map view, this is where having two screens comes in handy. Um, again, I can view um, kind of what my uh, my cross section uh, is going to look like in conjunction with the uh, the map. So let me go ahead and resize this here. Also, where bigger monitors uh, help out. Um, so let's look at that uh, MLBS surface again there. And so you'll see in my cross section. I'm over here on the left-hand side. This is going to be down here um, in this lower lower corner. As I move across the cross section, you'll see the surface, and then where it gets truncated, you get your missing section. And so, anytime I come through here and adjust um, any picks, um, the map will automatically update to show that. And so I can click and drag and move this pick somewhere else, and I'll notice my contours are going to adjust. Um, to honor that change immediately on the fly. So in GeoAtlas, when you're working in there, um, you'll make your pick and cross section. The pick will be saved to the database. You'll have to update your layer, refresh data sources, uh, regrid and recontour uh, to pick up on that change. Uh, Smart section does it all on the fly. Move that back over there. Um, with the um, kind of the conformance, or I'm sorry, unconformity trimming there, I can also apply um, unconformity gapping to view any missing section there in the middle. So I can just simply right click in the cross section, go to gapping, and apply that unconformity gap. And if I need to, I can go through here and make any surface picks inside that missing section area um, for my, uh, my MLBS surface or any other surface that's being truncated by that top there. Um, as I saw before with the fault offsetting, I can view that in map view. I can also view that here in uh, cross-section view. So I'm going to toggle on a couple of my faults here. And let's toggle on the fault offset. And you'll see some areas where the fault um, is predicting where it would cross a certain formation um, and then where it's actually picked in a certain formation. Again, just based on where those uh, surfaces are located in there. So once this gets loaded up here, I'm going to toggle off uh, my unconformity gap. And so you'll see the surfaces being truncated here by default um, in certain areas. And I also have an area here where my fault is being um, crossed by another fault. So typically that you know shouldn't be happening there. We need to have sort of a um, fault network set up to say, okay, if it's you know being crossed by another fault, I need to alter that. So I can do all that here in the GeoService Model Properties box. And this box is going to be applicable in both map view and in cross-section view. I can come through here and add and remove any surfaces I need to, um, apply some surface constraints. Uh, we'll look at this in the other project a little bit more in depth. Um, apply any faults um, that I'll need to inside my interpretation um, and set up networks. So these are going to be unconformity networks and fault networks. Uh, so I have one set up where fault B should be truncating fault A. Um, so in this area here where it's crossing over, I need to have it uh, be cut off there. So I'm going to turn on my fault network uh, tool here in Frame Builder. 
and apply that. And when I do, you'll notice the fault um, here, the A fault that's crossing over the B fault uh, will disappear there. And so like with um, the uh, unconformity gapping that we're looking at there in cross-section, I can also apply fault gapping uh, to view any missing sections um, through there. Much the same way, right-click in the uh, map in the cross-section area and apply the fault. And there's your fault gapping. So again, if I need to pick any missing tops, uh, anything like that inside, I can do all that there in the, uh, the cross-section view. Toggle that back off. And I'm going to turn off um, a couple things here. I'm going to show off uh, one of the new features here in 2015 while I'm at it. Um, that is the uh, batch updating of Frame Builder tools. Um, as you saw there, you toggle one of these on and it has to load and uh, configure everything and you have to wait for that to finish before you can toggle on another one. Uh, with 2015, I'm able to do these in, uh, in a batch. So I'm going to toggle off my fault cuts and my fault networks and then update the model. And then I'll apply both of those at the same time instead of waiting for one to finish and then clicking on the next one. So I'm going to toggle off these faults for right now. Um, to kind of go on the uh, back with the picking um, and templates here, templates are going to be built inside um, PRISM. Um, these are going to be your, your uh, curves um, and rasters uh, added here in a PRISM track and then applied here in Smart Section. Um, much like you do inside X section. Uh, one of the cool features you can do inside uh, Smart section that you can't inside X section um, is uh, kind of update, update those uh, templates on the fly. Uh, so I'm going to come over here to the uh, Templates tab, and I'll see these are my Smart section templates. So what surfaces, um, what Prism template am I using, um, what faults are applied, what tools are checked on. Um, those are all saved as part of the Smart Section template. Um, again, you can apply those templates to any cross section when you open them up simply by applying a template by right clicking on it over here. Uh, to apply PRISM templates, I can come over here to the Active Well tab and I'll see my PRT template window over here and project templates um, added over here. And these are all the templates that I've created inside PRISM. And so again, um, as we did before, simply right click on one of these and apply as a default template and everything will change. Um, if I want to view uh, data that's available for a single individual well, uh, let's look at the raster well over here, I can select it and over here I can view data that's available for that well. Which log images do I have available? Which curves do I have available? Um, all that is viewable on a well-by-well -well basis. Um, also with Smart Section I'm able to view um, TGS log availability data um, to, um, to my cross section here. So if you have a, a TGS account, um, I believe that is the log line plus, um, I'm able to log in and I can go to a well and then see what rasters are available for this well um, and then purchase them from there and load them into my interpretation. Um, and here I can change which raster image is applied to the uh, template simply grabbing an image Oops. let me see here and it's not letting me do it interesting oh, once again um, so you can apply uh, different images to your uh, your interpretation um, from there. Um, also within the uh, the cross section there, um, again much like X section, um, you're able to go in and make picks for a certain formation top, uh, either creating a new one here. Um, let's just create a, a new top, give it a color. And now I can go through and making sure that top is active, simply go through and pick that in the uh, the cross section there. Um, as you can see here, um, as you go through and make the pick, you have to wait for it to update the model inside um, the map view. But with 2015, I now have the tool called the uh, Quick Pick to Tool. 
So I can toggle that on, and as soon as I, make, I click my mouse, it adds a point. I can add some interwell points in there. And once all that's done, save those picks, and it updates the model immediately instead of having to wait for each one to load individually. Um, and so with this um, kind of surface turned on here, I can go look at that in my map view. Let me turn this one off. And you'll see, um, kind of as I mentioned before, it's determined by um, the surrounding geology. So I don't have a whole lot of, uh, I don't have any picks outside of this cross section for that top. So it's only showing up um, around those those data points. And using conformance, I can conform that to another top um, and have that show up on the map there. And we'll look at that when I switch to the other project. Um, just a few more features there in, in cross section. Um, in X section, you have the ability to um, pick a, um, do correlate um, some logs together. I can do the same thing here inside smart section. Uh, I choose a surface that I want to model on, and then I grab the uh, correlation tool, click and drag a box around the area, and then use that to correlate my logs together and make my picks in the cross section just by clicking on the well uh, to move that pick if I need to. Again, these picks are where they need to be there. And then when I'm done, escape keys to make it go away. I can slip logs um, in cross-section view, take these and adjust the log up and down um, if I need to adjust any, uh, any information there. I can also move the log in, or the well entirely, move it closer to another one. So and space these uh, manually on my own. And I can also pan images um, inside of a, uh, a cross-section view. Uh, so if I had an image that's crossing over or it's too wide for a track, I can pan that image um, there in my uh, image track from the PRISM template that I'm using. Um, so let me think. I think that was everything that I needed there. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and switch um, to the other project to look at some of the seismic data and look at some correlation there. Um, Carlos, I'll hand it over to you if you have any questions while I do that. Okay, thank you. <coughs> thank you, Andrew, for the, the first part of the, of the webinar. And yes, we have a few questions. The first question is if we can actually bring interpretations or correlation from X section into to a smart section or front smart section into X section. Another question is more related about all the seismic stuff that you're going to touch uh, in the next part. And also, if it's possible to change the shape of the formation top data points in the map. You know, you have the little square, if it's possible to change the little square to circles, triangles, or whatever other shape. Um, for the uh, the data points? Yes. Uh, yes. Um, look at that here. Let me see that. I think we can change the font, but not the square. And we can change the size, but not this, the, the actually is the square. So I'm probably going to take a look if it, this one is already an enhancement request. Yes, I don't believe um, I've seen that before. Um, I'll have to look at the yeah, app that that was an enhancement request or not. Um, I could have sworn at one point there was the ability to change that, uh, but that might have been something else. Um, yeah, and so what was the um, first question? Um, if you can bring, if you work in an interpretation and you have a correlation in X section and you can bring that uh, correlation from X section inside the smart section or if you work in a smart section correlation, save it and bring it inside X section. Um, some of the templates um, and other things that you're using inside of a smart section interpretation can't be immediately transferred um, from smart section to X section and X section to smart section. Um, but any kind of uh, picks that you're making, any kind of intervals that you're picking, um, 
you know, the PRISM templates that you're using, all those are applicable both in Smart Section and in X Section. Um, and also new in 2015, um, and I think they're still you know, kind of improving this also from the next release, uh, is the ability to transform um, Smart Section cross sections into X Section cross sections and vice versa. Um, there's a, a Smart Section uh, converter tool inside X Section that allows you to uh, save it as an uh, transforms it from an XSD to an SSD. Um, XSD is your smart section, cross section um, file. SSD is your um, smart section, uh, cross section file. Um, yeah, there, there are some ways that you can, uh, you can convert that um, from one to the other. Uh, but for the most part, it's just really applying the same templates from one to the other into those, uh, those cross sections. Uh, some of the things you see in the cross, uh, smart section cross sections won't be transferred over. Um, your unconformities, um, some of those fault gappings, um, anything like that, those are automatically are not automatically transferred over. Um, and so, yeah, so the other question was on the seismic stuff. Like I said, we'll be doing here. Yes, uh, one of the questions was if you can use uh, seismic as a control point, if you don't have a good control points, so then you can use seismic data as a control point. And the second one is if you can use seismic faults in seismic section. And I'm pretty sure you're going to cover a little bit of, about yeah. those topics. Okay. Yes, um, you can do both those things, and we'll look at that here. Okay, so all right. there are all the um, questions that we have. Okay. Um, I said, if uh, there's any questions I can't immediately answer during here, um, I can definitely uh, find some of that stuff out to you guys, uh, for you guys and send it out to you. Um, okay, yeah, so I'm in a different project here. Um, this one, if you've watched any of the other um, kind of uh, webinars that Fred has done before, he kind of uses this project for a lot of that. Um, I'm going to start off first by talking a little bit more about the conformance tool um, here in Map View. Um, like I said, this this project has a, a better um, use of formation tops in here. Um, so I'm going to start with the uh, the basal atoka here. Um, picked in this area, it's got pretty good control um, in the area. It's covering a lot of the the wells in here, but my Ellenberger surface is only picked in three wells in the area, so I don't have very good control on that. Um, it's just kind of uh, covering that small area. So I wanted to look more like, um, see what it would look like if I had more picks in the area based on surrounding geology of another top. Uh, this is where the conformance tool comes in. So you can find your conformance um, here in the geosurface model properties and I can go over to the surface constraints tab. Um, here um, you would set up what your, your constraints are going to be. So I have my basal atoka is um, controlling the LS surface, which is controlling the, excuse me, uh, M surface. And then the basal token is also controlling the upper barnet, which is controlling the maximum flooding basal barnet and Ellenberger surfaces. So basically, any time I make any changes to the a basal atoka, or any time I make changes to any of these other surfaces, they're going to also affect the display of those surfaces um, that are being constrained by it. So if I make an update to the basal atoka, It'll update everything. If I make a change to the barnet, it'll only affect the three surfaces here. Uh, so I'm going to toggle on conformance tool, and we're going to see um, what happens uh, when I apply that. You're going to see the Ellenberger surface is going to be modeled in the surrounding area based on geology from the upper barnet and basal atoka surfaces. And so what that does is basically take, okay, and says these are where I have my well picks. That's going to be controlling that area. But in areas where I don't have those well picks, let's use surrounding geology instead. So we kind of see the same thing um, in um, in GeoAtlas or um, you know, something like that when you uh, extrapolate um, surfaces there where there's data points that controls the surrounding area, but the, the grid will continue on um, and kind of interpolate uh, data from there. So with conformance, I can kind of then model these surfaces closer to a, uh, another surface there. And in cross-section view, um, it's much the same. Um, it'll, it'll conform itself more closely with uh, the Atoka surface there. So here's my basal Atoka, and there's my Ellenberger. So as you can see, it's more closely modeled um, in some areas where I don't have good well control. If I toggle that off, my Ellenberger is only picked 
in a few of these wells, so it's not modeling the entire area. Uh, so conformance gives you a better, uh, better control in areas where you don't have a lot of picks uh, for a certain formation top. Um, okay, so I'm going to go back to map view here um, and kind of go to that question um, about using uh, size vision data sources. Um, that's going to be a uh, surface here I have called the Atoka from uh, SV size vision. Um, as you see, I toggle it on, nothing gets displayed. I'm using well-based picks for that surface and I don't have a uh, formation picked in there called a token from size vision. Uh, so I'm going to go to my geoservice model properties here. And here's my token from size vision. And I have three options for a uh, surface source. I can use data points, um, either from WellBase or an isomap. Um, I can use an isomap grid. Um, I just choose the layer that I want to model it after. Or I can go to size vision, and I grab my interpretation and the horizon I want to tie it to. And then the seismic uh, survey that has that data and apply that. And so when I do that, now I'll have my Atoka from size vision um, modeled across the entire area. And you'll see it's modeled more closely with the horizon map that you would typically see inside size vision. Um, the surface now has a size vision cube as the icon here telling me that the data source for this um, surface is size vision and not from well base. Um, and I can go even further than that and use the conformance tools to model some of my Atoka surfaces or Ellenberger surfaces after that seismic um, data uh, for some of those uh, other uh, formations. So I can take my entire conformance here, model it after the Atoka from size vision, and now anytime I apply one of these, oops, turn on conformance, um, it's going to model itself after um, the, uh, the seismic horizon there. Let's see what that loads there. And so again, using the data points that I picked for that surface, uh, coupled with the surrounding geology of the uh, uh, my A smooth horizon uh, that I picked in size vision, um, I can apply that all here um, inside my map view. In cross section view, um, I can use that information to apply a seismic backdrop. And so you'll see here, there's my surfaces now modeling that toker from size vision surface with the conformance tool. Um, I want to apply a seismic backdrop, so I'm going to look at my uh, options here. Um, again, you're pulling this data from your size vision interpretation, whether it's 3D or 2D and 3D data. Um, choose your version that you're going to be using for the seismic data. I have a Z order applied there. Which horizons and faults do I want to see in the background? Again, just kind of for display only, so I can model my surfaces based on those horizons if I need to. Um, and this is where the size vision faults come in. I have an, uh, a fault picked in size vision called the X fault. Um, I can apply that here, and it will show up in my backdrop. Again, display only, and I can either trace it here in smart section um, if I want to, uh, to use it there. Um, and then any other kind of display options. Um, and with a palette or any kind of scaling that you might need to do there. So I've got my options set up. I'm going to toggle on the seismic backdrop, either by right-clicking on the uh, cross-section and saying seismic backdrop or clicking the icon up here. And there's my seismic um, data coming in from that interpretation. And you can, you can see you know, just how closely some of this is getting to the um, my seismic data there. So there's my TOCA. Barnett and other surfaces there. Um, so again, if it doesn't have a, a horizon to tie to, uh, for instance with my Ellenberger, I don't have a horizon picked inside size vision. Um, it's not, not fully related to any uh, horizon picked in there, but now I can use some of the information from here um, to uh, help me pick a horizon there in size vision. Um, Any time that you're working with um, uh, tying a seismic interpretation to a smart section interpretation, you need to use something called a velocity model. Uh, I'm going to open up size vision here real quick. Oh, this thing's in the way. Okay. Um, so I'm going to open up my, uh, my seismic interpretation here and I'm going to build a velocity model. With the velocity model, I'm able to tie that data together. Um, 
So I get this loaded up here. Uh, velocity model, you're taking a horizon and you're choosing which formations it's going to be tied to. And then vice versa, I can choose whether interval points I pick inside smart section can be used to update the um, horizon in size vision. So I have one in here called um, the MLSA um, velocity model. Uh, this is one that I created um, by tying my MLS and A time horizons to their formations in smart section, the M, the LS, and the basal atoka. And again, I can take those interval points and have them be applied back to my seismic interpretation by adding them to a smart, uh, smart section cross section and then sending them back um, to the velocity, or update the velocity model from smart section and send them back into size vision there. Oops, I don't need to create a new one. Um, and so I have that option here to update that velocity model when I make any picks um, here in the smart section view. Um, and it will update my, my model based on where I've moved and adjusted those picks. Um, and I can apply that backdrop to help me do any geo steering on horizontal wells um, if I need to. Let me go and open up one of those here. Um, so here's one of my horizontal wells. Uh, I can use this to um, and geo steer and apply a backdrop to better model some of those surfaces and line some of those up um, as I'm going through uh, the interpretation. Uh, I can also change templates here. Oops, it's probably not a good one for this cross section. Let me go back to the cross section. Um, and just changing templates on the fly there, double click on them to, to add them there. Um, and uh, then use that petrophysical data to help me uh, adjust any picks or model any of those. Um, so I think that was everything that I needed to hit there. Okay. Um, so some conclusions there. Uh, Smart Sections, a uh, powerful interpretation tool that integrates your geological, geophysical, and petrophysical data all into um, one module. Uh, I can use live modeling with Frame Builder to get a better visualization of the data that I'm trying to work in um, by choosing different data sources for my formations using conformance tools, uh, unconformity trimming to view where I have a uh, you know, missing section, anything like that. Um, and your interpretations can be customized and defined by the user to take full advantage of a project. So again, which formations do you have available, which wells are loaded, uh, which cross sections are you working in. Um, all that uh, defined in your interpretations, and you can have multiple interpretations in a project um, if you, specific users are working in different areas. Remember that our next steps, if you have any question about geographics or any of the modules, you can always go to the support lmcare.com, create cases over there, uh, find the solution, watch the webinar. Um, you can also watch, uh, we have a lot of webinars in the lmcare.com lmcare.com slash geographic demos. If you request any evaluation, do you want to require a code, you want to see how much is for the frame builder license or any other license geographic, you can contact uh, products at lmcare.com and one of the regional site manager will help you with that. Here's our uh, uh, www.lmcare.com, you can see the recent webinars and you can see the workflows, etc. right here. Uh, so thank you very much for being part of this webinar. Um, have a great day.